fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. You know, there's one snack that youngsters from 6 to 60 go for, and that's a chocolate fudge brownie, especially when they're perfect brownies, like the kind you'll bake with Betty Crocker chocolate fudge brownie mix, so easy that the youngsters can turn out a perfect batch with no trouble at all. The finest ingredients are right in the mix, including softest silk cake flour, pure vegetable shortening, and rich chocolate flavoring. You just add water and eggs, add nuts if you like, Blend and bake. Mmm, fudgy and chewy brownies that will fill a whole cookie jar. Each package of Betty Crocker brownie mix turns out 36 perfect brownies. They're such a treat for a family dessert topped with vanilla ice cream or for a snack when you invite your friends over in the afternoon. Ask your mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker brownie mix on hand. And someday soon, why not surprise her and bake up a batch of delicious brownies? For extra freshness... Keep them in the cookie jar. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Toto rode the trail toward Austin. The trail they were following was on a plateau that overlooked the plains. Suddenly, Toto pointed to the plains below and spoke. Look, Kimasabi. Stage coming cross plain. The horses seem to be running wild, Toto. Ah. I'll use my binoculars most of the Oh, Toto, oh, oh. there's no driver on the seat of that stage. Oh. We'll go down and try to head it off. Let's hurry. Oh, As the careening stage approached, the Lone Ranger swung Silver around so that the great white stallion could run alongside the swaying vehicle. Gauging the distance, the Lone Ranger rode beside the stage. Then, rising in the saddle, he leaped, grasping a handrail attached to the seat. Hey, Silver! Ho! Ho there! Ho! Ho! Steady up! Ho! You all right, Kimatami? Yes. We'll look inside the coach tunnel. The coach is empty. Maybe it wasn't carrying any passengers. The driver and guard were both shot from the boot. Maybe that's right. What we do about the stagecoach? Turn it around and drive it back the way it came, Toto. I'll ride ahead in case the driver and guard are lying wounded somewhere. All right, let's hurry. The Lone Ranger, riding ahead of the stage along the back trail, presently saw two men lying a few yards apart. He pulled to a stop and dismounted. Hold on, hold on, easy, steady out. This poor chap is dead. Here's the driver. He's still breathing. Water. Water. Easy, fella, easy. Here's some water. Take it easy now. Oh, thanks. I'm done for. They they got gold shipment from inside, Coach. Who did it? Do you know? Yeah. The Hooders. You mean the outlaw gang known as the Hooders? Yeah. Uh, I pulled the hood off the leader. We, we recognized him. So they, 
They shot us. Easy, <laughs> easy. Tell me, who was the leader? What's his name? He was... <coughs> He's... Rob. Rob. His name. What is it? Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh. Them both shot, Kimasabi? They're both dead, Toto. Oh, that plenty bad. The driver managed to speak. He said the gang known as the Hooders robbed the stage of a gold shipment. That outlaw gang we came to find. That's right. The gang has a clever leader. The driver said he snatched the hood from the leader's head. That's why he and the guard were shot. They recognized the leader. Driver saying name a fellow who lead gang? He started to. He said, Rob, Bob, then he died. Oh. They put the two bodies into the coach, Tonto. You drive the stage to town and explain to the sheriff... I'll wait for you nearby. Toto drove the stagecoach back to town and pulled the horses to a stop in front of the sheriff's office. The sheriff and his deputy came out of the office and approached the stage. What's the meaning of this, Indian? How come you're bringing that stage here? That's a stage that left here a while ago, Sheriff. Isn't that right. Outlaw gang, hold up stage. Shoot driver and guard. Take gold. Hey, where are the driver and guard? Are they wounded bad? Them both dead. You find bodies in coach. Holy mackerel. Let's have a look, Sheriff. Yeah, the Indian's right. They're both dead, all right. How do we know this engine didn't have something to do with the holdup? Yeah, that's right. Indian, you've got some explaining to do. Ah, a me ride trail with friend. See stagecoach running wild along plain. We stop horses and then ride back and find driver and guard. Yeah, but how do you know a gang held him up and did the killing and robbing? Driver still alive. Him tell that before him die. Him say gang wear hoods to hide faces. I Jiminy the hooders. All right, Indian, you can leave if you want to. We'll take care of these bodies and I'll start out with a posse. The Lone Ranger waited in a grove of cottonwoods just outside of town. Within a short time, Toto returned. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Did you have any trouble, Toto? No, Kimasabi. Me tell Sheriff what happened. Him say posse starts soon to hunt gang. We'll go back to the spot where we found the two men, try to pick up the gang's trail. Here's a look. Easy, fella. Easy. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Most of Meantime, in town, a crowd had gathered as the bodies were removed from the stagecoach and taken to the coroner's. Several men had gone into the sheriff's office to get the facts of the holdup and killing. One of them, known as Deal Robinson and who owned the local hotel and cafe, stood before the sheriff's desk, acting as spokesman for the crowd. He was saying, Sheriff, you say the stage and the bodies were brought into town by an Indian. Yep, that's what I said, Mr. Robinson, and that's the way it was. Mm. <laughs> it seems to me you should have held that Indian for questioning. Why did you let him go? Of course, it stands to reason if he had anything to do with what happened, he wouldn't have come here with the bodies. I'd say it's just the thing a smart killer might do. Uh, uh, Tommy Rod, right. that Indian couldn't have held up and killed the driver and guard and made off with a heavy box containing the gold shipment all by himself. Well, that's right. I agree with you on that. Good. I'm glad you do. But I do think he had help to do those things, Sheriff. And part of the plan was for him to bring back the stagecoach with the bodies... And tell that story about the Hooders doing it. That outlaw gang that we call the Hooders is responsible for a lot of robberies and killings hereabouts, Mr. Robinson. Now, it's logical to believe that same gang did this job, like the Indian said. Well, maybe so. Ah, we're wasting time. I've got to get a posse together and see what can be done to trail that gang. Sure, if I say trail that Indian and bring him back, then force him to tell the truth. And to tell where the person or persons who are helped him. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on now. Are you trying to tell me how to run my office? Well, maybe I am at that. Remember, I have a lot of influence around here. And it wouldn't take much to get you replaced. Go ahead. But while I am, Sheriff, I'm not taking orders from you or anybody else. I'm going hunting for the hooders. <laughs> Deal Robinson left the sheriff's office and walked rapidly down the street to his own office in the hotel. He motioned to two men who were lounging in the lobby, and a few minutes later, they came to his office. Oh, come in, come in. Cal, I have a job for you and Rusty to do. All right. 
What is it, boss? Yeah, anything you say. You both saw the Indian who drove the stage into town, didn't you? Yeah, we saw him when he drove past the hotel. That's right. Good. I tried to throw suspicion on that Indian, but the sheriff wouldn't listen to me. He's determined to blame everything on the hooters. <laughs> well, he isn't far from wrong at that. I don't see anything funny about that. Oh, stop worrying, boss. When we separated at the creek, each of us covered his trail on the way back to the hotel. Sure, the sheriff and the posse never picked up our trail yet. Well, it's always the first time. And I don't like the way he talks to me. He as much as told me to mind my own business. Oh, forget it. There's nothing you can do about it. Yes, there is. He's leading that posse out to where the holdup took place. Cal, I want you to head out of town right away and wait behind the rocks just across that narrow gorge. Wait for what? The sheriff and posse will ride the trail along the other side of the gorge. Use your rifle and pick him out of the saddle. Then head for the creek and cover your trail back here. All right. That's the way you want it. What am I supposed to do? Rusty, I want you to start out right now and trail that Indian who brought in the stage. Find him and bring him back here to town. The hoof marks the Lone Ranger and Toto were following circled toward the narrow gorge of which Deal Robinson had spoken. As the two men approached the gorge, the tracks they were following crossed a smooth, rocky surface. They reined to a stop to study the ground. Oh, 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 oh. Crack, cracks not turn off and go straight ahead. Oh, I see. We'll... Look, Toto. Over to the left near that boulder. Ah, I'm on horse. Him seem to be watching trail cross gorge. That's right. He's holding a rifle. Him not hear a stop here. All right, let's move closer. Come on. Sir. Get him up, scout. We'll stop here and watch him close as we Oh, 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 oh. oh. look, Kimasari. Riders coming up trail, just cross gorge. Looks like a posse. Ah, we see Sheriff riding in front. That man, Toto, he's aiming his rifle. Him wait till them get closer. Maybe try shoot Sheriff. I'll stop him. <laughs> Him drop rifle, grab arm. I think I creased his arm. He's leaving now. We'll follow him, Toto. Monsieur, we must count. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto had caught sight of the outlaw Cal as he was about to carry out Robinson's order to shoot the sheriff. Acting quickly, the Lone Ranger fired at Cal, who, dropping his rifle and grabbing his arm a moment, glanced around, then hurriedly rode away. The Lone Ranger and Toto started out in pursuit. Meantime, across the narrow gorge, the sheriff and the posse pulled to a halt. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know what that shooting was about. Look, there goes somebody over there. Throw that at him. I thought that looked like Robinson's man, Cal Pittman, being chased by an Indian in a mask, Tombray. Yeah, did you see that paint horse the Indian was riding? I bet he's the same one who brought in the stage. Oh, maybe Robinson was right after all, Sheriff, about that Indian. I hate to admit it, but maybe the Indian did have something to do with that holdup. They headed toward town. Let's go the same way till we can pick up their trail. Come on. Get up there. Yeah, get up. Cal rode directly to the hotel and reported what had happened to Deal Robinson. The Lone Ranger's bullet had creased his arm, and after the wound was attended to, 
Cal and Deal discussed the situation. What about the sheriff and the posse? How'd they act? Well, they were yelling and throwing letters I left. Well, maybe it's just as well, Cal. If they saw the Indian and mask, hombre, they'll think I was right after all. I'm going to watch for the posse to come back and see what the sheriff has to say now. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had followed Cal to town. The sun was setting, and they rode in the shadows behind the buildings until they found Cal's horse hitched in a grove behind the hotel. They pulled to a stop and dismounted. Well, 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 I move Silver further back into the shadows, in case anyone else comes along. And then what we do? You go around front and watch for the posse to return. I'll wait here until it's dark. And I'm going to go inside and try to locate that man. A short time later, the posse returned and drew rein in front of the sheriff's office. <laughs> I'll find out if Cal Pittman got back to town, have a talk with him about the men who are chasing him. And if the moon comes up bright, we'll try to locate them. Hey, Sheriff, here comes Cal now. Robinson's with him. Yeah, yeah, Cal's got a bandage on his arm. His owl hoots must have winged him this afternoon. We've been waiting for you to get back, Sheriff. While you were out hunting for an outlaw gang, Cal was attacked by that Indian on a mask man. I told you that Indian was the one you should have trailed. Sure, I was right. lucky they didn't kill me, Sheriff. Yes, but what I want to know is what you were doing out there on the other side of the gorge. Well, frankly, I sent Cal and Rusty out separately to try to trail that Indian. I wanted to prove to you I was right, Sheriff. Yeah, I was trailing that redskin when they jumped me. I saw you and the posse across the gorge, but I knew you couldn't do anything to help then. Well, maybe you were right, Robinson, about that Indian. We saw him with a masked hombre setting on after Cal. That's right. You mean they followed him? Yeah, it looked that way to us. Hey, Sheriff. Well, he just moved up on the edge of the crowd. That Indian. I don't know that's him, all right. Cover that Indian man and bring him here. All right, come wait. Come wait. Me not do wrong. You're covered, Indian. Come here. Come on, Me not savvy. Why you hold guns on me? Make him tell where his masked partner is, Sheriff. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Remember, two men were killed on that stage and Cal was wounded. You made a mistake in coming back here to town, Indian. Me not make mistake. Where's that masked man? Where is he? Me not talk. Well, by thunder, we ought to string him up right now. Oh, oh, hold oh, on, oh, Rob. Wait a minute. None of that kind of talk. Wait a minute. I'll attend to this in my own way. So far, you've made a botch of the whole thing. If I hadn't sent my own men to hunt this Indian, the truth wouldn't have come out. Truth not out yet. I told you once, Robinson. I'm telling you again. As long as I'm sheriff, I'll do things my own way. I'll thank you to mind your own business. Now you men move away from in front of this jailhouse or I'll run you all in pronto. After darkness fell, the Lone Ranger, not knowing what had happened to Toto, left the grove and cautiously made his way into the hotel through the back door. He moved along the dimly lit corridor, stopping momentarily to listen at each door. Suddenly he heard steps and voices coming through from the lobby. He quickly moved into a cross hallway and flattened himself against the wall in the shadows. Now that the Indian who brought the stage to town is in jail, we'll make our next move. What will that be? Good lynching party tonight will put the sheriff in bad. Rusty, go upstairs and have the others come to my office. I'll tell my plans to all of them. All right, Jim. They must mean tunnels in jail. Do something about this. A short time later, the sheriff and a deputy were at the sheriff's office talking. I sure don't like Robinson's attitude. Thinks he runs this town. Yeah, he certainly don't seem to like you, Sheriff. Don't move your cover. What's the, the mask, hombre? He came to get the engine out. Sheriff, I'm sorry to take this means, but I must talk to you without wasting time. In spite of those guns, mister, you're not taking that Indian away from this jail. Are you interested in catching the gang called the Hooders? Yeah, sure. Here's but... a silver bullet. That mean anything to you? Silver bullet, eh? That's right. I have more in my gun belt. Todd and I came down this way to help find the Hooders. We saw the empty stage and Tonto brought it and the two bodies back here to you. Yeah, that Indian's name is Tonto? Right. You carry silver bullets. 
Say, you must be the Lone Ranger. I am. Hey, Dave, put up your guns. You don't need them. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. Todd and I came upon a man with a rifle waiting to shoot you from ambush this afternoon. What? Yes. I wounded him and he rode away. Came here to town. That was Cal Pittman, Robinson's man. Say he was aiming to kill me? Yes. Bring Toto out here. Then get a few men. If we hurry, I'm sure we can catch the hooders with our leader. In Deal Robinson's office, Cal and Rusty, with three other men, listened as Robinson talked. Cal, you and Rusty keep under cover tonight. I'll have Joe and Pete go to the cafe and arouse the men against that Indian. It'll be easy for a big lynching party to take them from jail and string them up. What good does that do us, though? I've accused the sheriff of making a lot of mistakes right along. After the lynching, I'll accuse him of not protecting his prisoner until we could locate the mask hombre. Well, what about that masked man? He's still on the loose? Yes. And after I get you appointed sheriff, Rusty, you can blame everything our hooded gang does on that masked man. Then we'll be able to operate without any trouble from the law. What? <laughs> the box of gold from the stage is in my closet over there. If you men do a good job tonight, we'll divvy up what's in that box in the morning. I'll get going to the cafe. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> Don't move any what? of you. You're the sheriff and the deputies. What's the meaning of this? We heard everything that was said, Robinson. You're the leader of those hooders. I'll right. settle you. Hey! Now keep reaching, the rest of you. you. must have men posted at the window. Fight your way out, men! Go down fighting. No, no. They're through, Sheriff. Yeah, they are. Search the place, men. Right. Here's the box of gold in this closet. Yeah, and here are the hoods they wore in the desk drawer. You have nothing on me. Shut up. Men like you are a disgrace. Like the mask man said, you keep the West from growing. Bring us a bad name out this way. You're all going to jail for the murder of the stage driver and the guard. What do you mean the mask man said that? What's he got to do with this? Uh, well, he saved me from your bullet a minute ago when he shot through the window. That's twice today he saved my life. He and that Indian sure are a great pair of hombres. Why should he help you? Who is he? Before you decided to plot against that Indian, Robinson, you should have found out that he was the one who rides with the Lone Ranger. Oh, Ranger. <laughs> 